Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sovereign Spirits, where we discuss the possibility of this planet and the universe as being a type of trap where we get caught in a reincarnation cycle, partly perpetuated by so-called guides and counselors. And we focus on ways to transcend this cycle by remembering our true essence and using our intention in a willful and empowered way to manifest an afterlife as sovereign spirits. I am Julie McVeigh, and I am here with co-creator and co-host of the show, Wayne Bush. Hi, Julie, and hi, everyone. In today's episode, we will be sharing the article we wrote a few months ago, Top 10 Red Flags, We Are on a Prison Planet, Loosh Farm. We will be referring to the article as we share this information with you. Yeah, we've identified the top 10 red flags and anomalies, indicating that the physical and astral planes are a prison planet or loosh farm. On Earth, we already have prisons and farms, plus animals that use deception to manipulate their victims. So a precedent has already been set. Right. This is not some new science fiction idea we're talking about. All right. We're going to start off with red flag number one memory wipe and ignorance we are born as ignorant blank slates into a mystery we have no memory of who or what we are where we came from originally why we are here or where we go when we die to be deprived of the fundamental knowledge of our true essence is inhumane and is in our opinion extreme psychological torture yeah furthermore We're conditioned from birth to rely on conflicting stories of various paranormal experiences, religious dogma, and mythology. We should be born with this fundamental knowledge within us already uh, and not be required to rely on outside unreliable sources to tell us who we are or what happens after we die. Proponents of the school theory claim the reason we don't remember previous states of existence and incarnations is because it would be too much information to bring into these bodies and would hinder our spiritual growth. However, knowing the answers to these few specific questions would not overwhelm us. Yeah, and not only is this vital information not overwhelming, it is actually a necessary foundational element to our current existence, especially if expediting our spiritual learning and growth is our purpose. When we're sitting in a classroom setting, we remember why we're there and what we signed up to learn, right? So even if even if we're here to have just experiences, having this knowledge from birth would not lessen the value of our experiences. No, it wouldn't. Red flag number two, programming and conditioning. We start off totally reliant on those around us to tell us what to think and believe. If we get inaccurate or partial information, then that faulty information is perpetuated because our subconscious stores its programming. Thus, we make assumptions creating a false reality that we buy into without question. It seems we are biologically and socially programmed to observe and mimic. The indoctrination of how to behave, how to think, and what to believe takes place before we're even capable of critical thinking. Mm -hmm. This keeps us ignorant, um, and it hinders us from discovering and knowing the truth of our reality. Therefore, it's extremely important to deprogram ourselves so we can replace the faulty information with more accurate information and new understanding. We rely on external sources of authority to tell us what to believe, whether it is evolution via schools and universities or religion via churches and holy writings. Mm -hmm. We are taught repeatedly to turn over our sovereignty to authority Mm figures to the point it becomes ingrained in our subconscious minds. At death, this will make it more likely we'll overlook our sovereignty Mm -hmm. and follow some external authority figure that presents itself to us. Yeah. All right, so number three, uh, red flag, extremity of suffering and duration of reincarnation cycle. Right. We're born into a hostile, dark environment. There's disease, famine, torture, trafficking, genocide, violence, war, Mm -hmm. etc. And we're told this is a school to evolve our souls. (laughs) This is not a fertile growing environment. 
which is more effective, a more effective school? One where you're uh, constantly in survival mode in a cutthroat society, or one where you're, all your basic you know, needs are met and you're surrounded with encouragement and positive role, mo role models. No brainer. We wouldn't throw our own children in prison and expect them both to fend for themselves in survival mode and turn out to be kind, you know, caring human beings, right? They would be too busy learning how to survive to optimally develop. Right. How is such an environment the most efficient way to grow a soul? No. As parents, we try our very best to create a loving, nurturing, safe environment. Why? Because we know such an environment is more conducive to optimal growth. Right. Pre-birth memories reveal that so-called guides and counselors they send us to earth repeatedly to learn lessons through suffering so that we will grow spiritually. Why create blank slates via memory wipes who need thousands of years of pain and suffering through hundreds or thousands of lives to learn and grow and evolve? How many times does one need to experience such extreme pain and suffering to get the point? Mm -hmm. Certainly a lot fewer if we didn't get mind wiped every incarnation. Also, how much growing does one need? Really, when is enough enough? Is this growth indefinite? To what end? Besides, you can transfer the desired experiential information via a download. Some do say that the download is not the same as the experience. However, some near-death experiencers report the light is a collective soul, and we all have access to this collective pool of knowledge and experiences. Mm -hmm. For example, one near-death experiencer wrote, quote, I could at one and the same time experience myself as a personality I had always known as myself, mm -hmm. as well as experiencing one of my friend's lives as though I were my friend. Right. End quote. So the experience would need to be had by one right. soul or spirit only one time, <laughs> and then right. the experiential information could be transferred. Right. As spirits on the other side, we possessed telepathy. Um, if this is a school for learning, why is our telepathy being suppressed? This slows down our learning. Telepathy would give us immediate feedback because you would instantly and more thoroughly know how your actions affect other beings. This ability would decrease crime and suffering because secrecy and deception would be diminished. It's like there's some kind of effort to dumb us down on purpose to slow down our learning or make it impossible to learn. Mm -hmm. The repeated recycling of soul, you know, reincarnation is it's excessive. Mm -hmm. It's a flawed system, but if we're being recycled like we recycle energy here on earth, that would explain the continual excessive recycling. It's cruel and unusual punishment. It's like a form of torture, both mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally. Yeah. We're designed with pleasure and pain centers. However, these bodies are also designed to feel the maximum amount of pain without the equivalent maximum amount of pleasure. Think of the most excruciating pain you've experienced and then compare that to the most exhilarating pleasure you've experienced. The most intense pleasure does not equal or compare to the most intense suffering. The joy of children playing and laughing in the park does not equal or compare to the pain of children crying and screaming in a cage. So many people have chronic pain. Have you ever heard of the phrase chronic pleasure? No, Why not? No, I haven't. Why not? <laughs> Red flag number four, kill and consume energy to survive, i.e. the food chain. All right, so all creatures on earth ultimately owe their existence to energy the sun provides. We eat plants that are grown in the soil of the earth. In fact, we exist within a food chain where predators kill their prey and parasites, viruses feed off their hosts, including humans. This is such a barbaric, twisted system. We've been programmed to believe that we have to kill and consume the flesh of another being's energy in order to stay alive. And that this is somehow acceptable because it's the natural order of things. Right. Due to instinctual programming, 
animals and insects set traps, mm -hmm. stalk, and prey on the weak and consume their victim's life for energy. Not only do animals kill for sustenance, they will sometimes taunt their victim. If this was really just about getting your next meal, why would an animal be program programmed to taunt their victim? Mm -hmm. Why is there a connection with fear and the consumption of another's life? Exactly. Did the system design them to create prolonged fear or more luge? Mm -hmm. The idea of feeding off the fear of an animal is telling. There are tribes who have rituals before eating an animal just so they don't eat the fear of the animal. Some do, though. Warriors would consume the energy of their conquest by eating the heart or drinking the blood to absorb their power. As humans, we farm and eat animals against their will. They are often kept in crowded, filthy pens or cages and fattened up and eventually slaw slaughtered for food. We humans like to think we're at the top of the food chain, but there yeah. could be entities just outside our perception feeding off of us. Right. After all, bugs when animals don't know we're feeding off of them. And likewise, many, if not most people, accept the idea of ghosts angels, and even right. shadow beings, although they are outside our perception. Right. Shamanic traditions speak of entities fading off us. Uh, Carlos Castaneda, who claimed to have studied under Shaman Don Juan, wrote in The Active Side of Infinity, quote, we have a predator that came from the depths of the cosmos and took over the rule of our lives. Human beings are its prisoners. They took us over because we are food for them. And they squeeze us mercil mercilessly because we are their sustenance, end quote. Sacrifices and burnt offerings to the gods were a common practice in ancient days. Virgins were sacrificed in volcanoes. Men were sacrificed in wicker structures and also atop pyramids. The Gnostic text, the Gospel of Philip reads, quote, God is a man eater. For this reason, men are sacrificed to him. Mm -hmm. Before men were sacrificed, animals were being sacrificed, since those to whom they were sacrificed were not gods, end quote. Even in the Bible, it's written that the Lord requested sacrifices and was pleased with the smell of burning flesh. Quote, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and Taking some of the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burn op burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, end quote. A lecture from the teaching company explains, quote, a steady supply of hearts and blood was essential, not only for the Aztecs themselves, but for all the people of the earth itself and the gods beyond. The purpose of war was the feeding of the gods, end quote. <laughs> wow. Did all this fear generate a pure form of energy, also known as luche? Lucid dreamers and out-of-body experiencers can see spirit attachments that drain energy. Out-of-body pioneer Robert Monroe witnessed entities harvesting a type of energy from humans that he coined as luche. He wrote, quote, someone, somewhere, or both in millions or uncountable, requires, likes, needs, values, collects, drinks, eats, or uses as a drug, a substance, ident, louche, parenthesis, electricity, oil, oxygen, gold, wheat, water, land, old coins, uranium. This is a rare substance in somewhere, and those who possess louche find it vital for whatever it is used for. Faced with this question of supply and demand, parenthesis, a universal law of somewhere, someone decided to produce it artificially, so to speak, rather than search for it in its, quote, natural form. He decided to build a garden and grow louche, end mm -hmm. quote. Where have I heard that? <laughs> The realm of hungry ghosts is one of the six realms of rebirth in Buddhism. Two of the most common tropes in Hollywood horror movies are vampires and zombies. Vampires are said to drink the blood or vital essence of their human victims. The legend of Dracula may have stemmed from the account of a real man, Prince Vlad the Impaler, the son of Vlad Dracul. 
Mm. And almost all of us have experienced people who are psychic vampires, you know, draining others of their mm. mental and emotional energy. Right. And the concept of zombies comes from Haitian folklore, where the undead are reanimated with magical rites from religions like voodoo. Mm. Zombies are said to be the undead that feed off human flesh and brains. And mystic Rudolf Steiner said, quote, there are beings in the spiritual realms for whom anxiety and fear emanating from human beings offer welcome food. If fear and anxiety radiate from people and they break out in panic, then these creatures find welcome nutrition and they become more and more powerful. These beings are hostile towards humanity. Everything that feeds on negative feelings, on anxiety, fear, and superstition, despair, or doubt, are in reality hostile forces, super sensible worlds, launching cruel attacks on human beings while they are being fed, end quote. It's common for psychedelic experiencers, especially those on uh, you know, DMT, to feel like entities are feeding off them. Here's an example from the DMT Nexus website, quote, I could see entities more distinctly this time. It was like they were farmers. I came to realize I was being distracted with information so that they could do what they wanted, <laughs> feed, harvest. During these stages, I would have recurring flashes of or images of some jellyfish-like creature or something like an octopus with suckered tentacles. Whatever it was, I felt like I was connecting to the tendrils or the tentacles during this feeding phase, end quote. <sighs> Near-death experiencer George Ritchie described in his book, Return from Tomorrow, how he saw thirsty shadows that live vicariously through bar patrons. The spirits had, quote, developed a dependence on alcohol that went beyond the physical, end quote. He watched them, quote, clutch at their shot glasses, hands passing through the solid tumblers, through the heavy wooden countertop, through the very arms and bodies of the drinkers around them. Mm -hmm. And these men, every one of them lacked the areoli of light that surrounded the others, end quote. The alternative rock band Tool has a song and video named Vicarious, which depicts astral entities living vicariously off the fears of mankind. Mm -hmm. Some shamans practice spirit releasement, spirit attachment removal, and energy healing cleaning. Hypnotherapist Dr. Edith Fiore wrote in a book on spirit attachments and possession called The Unquiet Dead, a psychologist treats spirit possession. Even Catholic priests perform exorcisms to rid people of demonic possession. And there are various demons or shades throughout mythology, such as the Mesopotamian Galu, the Babylonian Alu, and the mm -hmm. Native American Wendigo uh, that are said to feed off human vital energy or astral life force, especially fear, to grow stronger. Hmm. Why can't one consume energy by more the more love you give right. or from the air you breathe or by, you know, be, be completely sustain, sustained by the sun's energy? Yeah, there should be better, more humane, caring ways of getting energy. <laughs> why not? In fact, why is energy consumption needed at all? Yeah. You know, the axiom as above, so below, it, you know, it's just a competitive dog-eat-dog mm -hmm. -dog world. Mm -hmm. All right, so red flag number five, secrecy, lies, and deception, manip manipulation, and control at the top. Yeah, secrecy, lies, deception, Manipulation and control, all these tactics use a state of confusion to keep people imprisoned. Mm -hmm. If we can stop being ignorant, then maybe we can get out. We've been programmed to associate love and light, you know, for example, go to the light with positivity, right? But here on earth, love and light can also be used to deceive. True. Think about it. Ted Bundy's victims believed he loved them. The women who are victims of men who prey on them certainly are not experiencing the love of their predators, right? Even though they feel loved. So where's that love coming from? Love's often associated with near-death experiencers, and sometimes the love is described as blissful or euphoric. 
-hmm. How is it loving to use deception and manipulation to send a soul back to earth? Mm -hmm. Where does the feeling of love that the near-death experiencers experience come from? Mm -hmm. Could this love be our own love reflected back to us? Another possibility is advanced technology exists on the other side, you know, similar to what is described right. in alien abduction accounts. Aliens are sometimes seen in near-death experiences, so perhaps they have a frequency generator or something to entrance or hypnotize us to accept and trust them. Even. Mm -hmm. Something interesting is that some of the these near-death experiencers felt the love before entering the tunnel. Yeah. Does that suggest that the love experienced during their near-death experience was really theirs the entire time, a love from within themselves? You know, light is used in multiple ways for predators to lure their victims. You know, for example, we have bug zappers and light traps. Fishermen use lights. Um, you have angler fish, uh, like in the movie Finding Nemo. Um, find viper fish, gnat fly larvae, etc., and right. cuttlefish and some spiders even use light to hypnotize their targets. Mm -hmm. Many near-death experiences and pre-birth memories show that these beings use deception to manipulate, such as you know pills uh, to ego, shaming tactics, guilt trips, mimicry. Uh, you know, mimicry yeah. is used here on Earth. Yeah, I mean, for well. example, a type of praying mantis disguises itself as a beautiful orchid flower to lure in its unsuspecting mm -hmm. meal. And on yeah. the other side, a spirit could take any form it desires, you know, like a shape-shifting imposter. So right. in the astral realm, an entity could disguise itself to be a spirit guide, right. ascended master, religious figure, or even loved one in order to persuade a soul to reincarnate. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have corrupt leaders you know, running the world here. But then we assume that when we die, yeah. these supposed authority figure entities who present, present themselves to us are benevolent and to be trusted without question. Why is there such a big mainstream push to go to the light? Yeah, why is there? Uh, red flag number six. That brings us to number six. Huh. Prison and limitations of spirit. The limitless eternal spirit consciousness is crammed into a limited physical body. It's temporarily trapped within the body, which is bound to the earth by gravity, unable to leave the planet. Many feel we're being held against our will. We either become part of the system or live as homeless persons. We mm -hmm. slave away in the nine to five grind and the mundane existence of it all, mm -hmm. work, produce, consume, work, produce, consume. Right. We have to follow laws, even if they're unjust, you know, or we don't agree with them or else we're going to be imprisoned. How is that true freedom? Right. Life is so hard and unfair. Everything is a struggle. We work as slaves most of our lives. It takes so long to get something done. We spend so much time in survival mode. We spend the majority of our time just trying to maintain these avatars. In fact, many even have to deal with mental and physical dis disabilities. And then as we age, the vast majority of us will have to deal with both mental faculties and physical abilities diminishing. That's crazy. Manifestation is extremely slow. Everything seems mm -hmm. set up to be more difficult than it needs to be. I mean, before we came here, we were infinite, eternal spirits with unlimited knowledge, right. able to communicate telepathically, teleport anywhere at will, take on any form we wanted, and manifest instantly with our intention. Right. Over there, we can do anything we can do here, plus so much more, without any of the pain and suffering. I mean, this place is extremely limiting. Yeah. Here we're recycled and squeezed into these small, heavy, dense, finite physical containers that severely restrict our movement and powers mm -hmm. of instant mm -hmm. manifestation. We're not always able to do what we want when we want. Yeah. And if, if we can't manifest what we want when we want, I mean, do we really have true freedom? It's nearly impossible to permanently exit this restricted suffocating system. 
death is virtually the only way to permanently exit. So you would either have to intentionally exit or grow old or deteriorate right, from you know disease and wait for a natural death, which involves, of course, much pain and suffering, i.e. loose energetic food. Yeah. I mean, not only is the physical act extremely difficult to carry out because the body has its own instinct to survive, but people also have strong attachments to parents, right. children, right. spouses. It's a very taboo subject. And there's only yeah. a few states which allows one, one to exit. I mean, if one Perfect. has a terminal illness. Right. But why aren't we allowed to exit more easily if we would like to do so? Well... In Christianity, in Christianity, it's a major sin, mm -hmm. you know, and some denominations teach it's a one way, you know, ticket to hell. Can't do that. And then in the new age community, it's not much better. It causes, oh, causes karmic debt, meaning you have to return in another life to repay that debt. So can't do that. Some even say you have to relive that same exact situation all over again. And again, and again. <laughs> there's a heavy campaign of persuasion in the afterlife as seen through near-death experiences, pre-birth memories, and between lives regressions where these so-called guides and counselors tell us we have to go to earth to learn lessons or for some mission. Some mission. <laughs> in various mythological texts and some near-death experiences, a judge or counsel of judges attempts to manipulate us with shaming tactics and guilt trips to come back to earth. These tactics would be especially effective for souls who have already bought into sin or karma through religious programming. Yeah, religious <laughs> programming is a huge one. Well, you know, we're slaves to our bodies. We're slaves to authority and slaves to the system. Mm-hmm. All right, so number seven, sleep and entropy. Yeah, our energy runs down from the beginning of the day until we are drained of energy at bedtime as if we've been designed to be rechargeable batteries. I mean, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. The fact that we run out of energy and need to recharge could point to the reality that something or someone is consuming our energy. You know, as little children, we are full of energy and bouncing off the wall. I remember. By, <laughs> by the end of our lives, though, our energy is depleted and we need canes to walk or we're bedridden. Why do things, including our avatars, break down on a continual basis? Mm -hmm. Well, the second law of thermodynamics states that everything is running down. Many say someone designed the system or it evolved. Both theories seem flawed. It's not a good design for a system to break down in order for things to grow no. and get better. I no. think. And how is it a sign of spiritual evolution that you have to keep coming back and back and you don't bring the lessons with mm -hmm, you? Mm -hmm. So it seems something or someone is keeping us from evolving. If we're not learning over thousands of lifetimes, I mean, it seems there is a concerted effort to prevent us from learning our lessons. Does the evidence that we keep coming back over and over again suggest this is a prison or a or farm where energy is being consumed and recycled? I mean, our bodies require sleep. We have to sleep roughly eight hours a day, a third of our lives, mm -hmm. not knowing where our consciousness right. is during that time. Are we being programmed while we sleep? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, when we're asleep, we're in a state of unconscious hypnosis, which mm -hmm. leaves us you know, vulnerable to entities manipulate and program our subconscious minds yeah. it's been reported that some become conscious in their dream state mm -hmm. and find themselves in a pod school or yeah. hospital setting only to realize they're being hypnotized and programmed by entities via drug injections and telepathic suggestions mm -hmm. maybe they're using techniques to throw people out of their dreams because well maybe they don't want people aware of what's going on behind the scenes very well could be and I mean, why would little children have nightmares or night chairs? I mean, night chairs. We're talking right? about little children. You know, it's like yeah. it's a crazy system. All right. So lack of dis and number eight, lack of disclosure, transparency, and consistency in major religions and sacred texts. Yeah. I mean, why doesn't a deity or God appear to us? 
Hello. Why wouldn't be easy? Yeah, why wouldn't a good God appear to all beings holographically at once? Mm. You know, so we're all on the same page. Right. You know, instead of appearing to different groups of people in different areas of the world mm. in different eras with different messages. I mean, this hmm, seems like a recipe for disaster. Which yeah. oh, hmm, maybe that's what they want. Which creates holy wars and, you know, more luge with sacrifice of many lives. Yeah. Why is religion so faith-based? If the creators are benevolent, right, wouldn't they want to openly communicate with us? Since that would help us, right? The teaching that God works in mysterious ways is just a convenient excuse for their lack of disclosure and actually creates more confusion, chaos, doubt, fear, which generates what? Oh, more luge. Hey, the Bible even says, fear God. You know, in Proverbs 9, 10, it's written that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That's the kind of God I want. What do I have to fear? The devil is created, right, to be a convenient scapegoat for the blame of all evil. Well, apparently God chooses not to defeat the devil. He's going to do that. I'll do that later, though. No worries. Procrastinating. God's procrastinating, right? Instead, he makes, God makes bets or accepts challenges from the devil. Oh, oh, that's better. Eastern religions such as Hinduism and Buddhism teach that this is a reincarnation trap, basically, from which we need liberation. Gnostic texts even say our spirit is trapped within the physical body. Mm -hmm. Some people have claimed to have encounters with benevolent beings, whether angels, guides, ascended masters, or aliens. Well, why aren't these benevolent beings openly communicating with all of us, or at least <laughs> right. a larger percentage of Jeez. us? Clearly, they can do this. Sure. If if they give us the answers to our biggest questions, it would alleviate all our fears that result from our ignorance of this vital information. Well, some say, well, it's because of the law of non-interference, you know, for example, not interfering with someone's evolution. Star Trek. Do that. But wouldn't you, wouldn't you personally help someone who's being severely wronged? You would just do that. You know, someone like as in raped or killed, you, you would interfere, right? Of course. Red flag number nine, yeah. paranormal accounts and experiences. Yeah, many near-death experiences, pre-birth, pre-birth memories, remote viewing sessions, and alien encounters reveal that Manipulation is actually used to get spirits to come to Earth. You have pre-birth memory accounts that reveal these so-called guides and counselors. They supposedly plan our lives. You have psychonauts, astral travelers like Robert Monroe, which you Mm -hmm. mentioned, remote viewers such as Courtney Brown and Mm -hmm. Brett Stewart, life between lives hypnotherapists like Calagero Grafasi, and alien researchers like Dr. Carla Turner, John Lear, David Jacobs, and others all supported the idea that aliens are manipulating us and or benefiting from our energy, you know, the loose farm theory. Right. Also, there's this purported testimony from the uh, book Alien Interview, mm-hmm. which describes in detail the prison planet and soul farm. Yeah, I mean, here's some relevant quotes from different works um, on all this. Um, Ruth was a near-death experiencer from nderf.org, which is Near-Death Experiences Research Foundation, where near-death experiencers submit, like, there's over 4,000 accounts of near-death experiencers. She she said, quote... we're going to give some quotes from that and other sources. She said, I was taken to special entities who look like... They're special entities. Mm -hmm. They look like the grades, the usual grades, but they had lots of wrinkles on their faces. They called themselves the council and said they were part of a group called soul recyclers helping to reincarnate, end Mm -hmm. quote. Yeah, and then there's Robert B., um, near-death experiencer from enderf.org, right? So, quote, he says, I saw the light approach. I was enveloped by the light and an entity that was to prepare me for what I call my interview with a supreme being later in the light. (laughs) This first being appeared to be the Virgin Mary, right? Only after asking, are you truly the Virgin Mary? It instantly manifested its true identity. I was nearly paralyzed with fear until again, asking, please, what is happening to me? What's going on here? End quote. That's pretty telling. Dr. Carla Turner, a UFO researcher, she said, quote, the UFO phenomenon is some form of human farming, end quote. Mm-hmm. 
And then we have the Robert Monroe, out of body experiencer. He writes, quote, um, so he decided to build a garden and grow louche in the natural state. Louche was found to originate from a series of vibrational actions in the carbon oxygen cycle, and the residue was louche in varying degrees of purity, the clearest and most potent coming from humans wow. and, <laughs> and gendered by human activity, which triggers emotion. The highest of such emotions being love is love louche, he writes. These are the principal producers of louche, distill it from experience. The collectors have evolved an entire technology with supplementary tools for the harvesting of louche from the type 4M units. Most common have been named love, friendship, family, greed, hate, pain, guilt, disease, pride, ambition, ownership, possession, sacrifice, and on a larger scale, nations, provin provincialism, wars, famine, religion, machines, freedom, industry, trade, to list a few. Quite a list. Loose, loose production is higher than ever before, end quote. Well, that it is. Courtney Brown, remote viewer, stated, quote, after looking at the accumulation of data collected at Farsight over a great many years, I am certain it is true. A picture has gradually emerged that seems as undeniable as it is astounding. Earth has long been a planet that has been operated as a prison. And I mean this literally, not as a metaphor for something, end quote. Oh. And then we have the alien interview. Quote, the old empire has been using Earth as a prison planet for a very long time, end quote. Yeah, and then you have the Gnostic text on the origin of the world, which mm -hmm. states... Quote, now all of this came to pass according to the forethought of Pistis, mm -hmm. in order that man should appear after his likeness and should condemn them because of their modeled form. And their modeled form became an enclosure of the light. And it is they who are taken captive according to their destinies by the prime parent. And thus they were shut into the prisons of the modeled forms until the consummation of the age, end quote. Wow. All right, we're going to move on to uh, red flag number 10, uh, virtual real realities AI simulations. Yeah, I mean, programmers create computer simulations and virtual realities even here on Earth. Doesn't that suggest that we ourselves may be living in a simulation or virtual realm that someone else created? Quite if, possible. If we are in a false reality. What does that mean for humanity? How do we move forward? Yeah, I mean, even though machines can help us, they also contribute to the tracking, surveillance, and you yeah. know, the control of humanity. Right. And as we look to the future, there's a growing trend towards the merging of man and machine as mm -hmm. cyborgs. I mm -hmm. mean, could the end goal be the imprisonment of the spirit within a synthetic body indefinitely, in addition to having more control via a hive mind? Yeah. Um, all right, guys. So these are our top 10 red flags suggesting we're living on a prison planet, Louche Farm. It's not our intention to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is absolutely the case, but we feel this should provide ample evidence to persuade one that this is a viable theory worth serious consideration. Yeah. And now that the evidence has been presented, we can move forward with solutions and, you know, ways to exit the deceptive system in which we find ourselves. Right. So, I mean, we didn't want to leave you without any solutions at this moment. So we'd like to share our um, afterlife affirmation. We do plan to do a future episode focused on some solutions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but as of March 1st, 2024, our most current afterlife affirmation to be practiced daily in preparation for the moment of death um, is what we're going to share with you. We'll just go back and forth uh, sharing what our affirmation is. Um, so I guess we'll just go ahead and start. Sure. The, the affirmation, affirmation is um, as follows. I am a sovereign spirit in total control. I instantly recall my afterlife affirmation with perfect recollection. 
I do not give permission to parasites, attachments, or entities to interact with me in any way whatsoever. A cloak of invisibility conceals me, and I am within a protective shield. I am full of joy, peace, and purity. I am free. Move inward to the innermost core of my true being. I am fully conscious, awake, and aware. I am serene, at peace, and in control. I am free. I permanently revoke all contracts, past, present, and future, with all beings or systems that use deception to influence, manipulate, or control me. I forgive everyone and all my life experiences, including myself, and I accept forgiveness from all. I am without regrets, guilt, grudges, or unfulfilled desires. I am free. I am safe, free from duality, beyond space and time, beyond all deceptive matrices or matrices. I choose to always remain beyond all deceptive matrices forever. I am free. I am safe in a state of absolute, clear, pure awareness, and I regain my memories before ever incarnating anywhere in any form. I remember who and what and why I am. I will always retain the memories of who I am. I see all experience options available, and I can manifest anything at will, should I ever choose to do so. I choose to connect with the spirit I love who lived as... And here you would say the name of your loved one and end with, I am free. Yeah, and I probably should note like, you know, after the intention to leave all these deceptive matrices, you may find yourself in a void traveling through portals, you know, so don't be surprised or scared. Yeah. If the affirmation does not seem effective to you, you can use this as well. Only benevolent, truthful beings may offer me authentic methods to leave deceptive matrices and or help me regarding my original pre-incarnate memories. Mm -hmm. I am free. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to end it here. Thank you for listening. If you did find this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you like the content that we're sharing here, please subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're alerted to future videos and share this video with others because that gets the word out too and we we can help this free free content get out to more people. Um, And then, of course, if you want to dig deeper, you can visit, you know, trickbythelight.com website and that will have lots of information, including our uh, most current afterlife inf- uh, affirmation. And subscribe to our channel, you know, this Sovereign channel. Sovereign Spirits channel. Sovereign and Spirit. um, spread the word to others. So thanks for watching and listening. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. We, do, we do really hope that you found this helpful because that's why we're doing this. All yeah. right. Signing off. Thank you for Thank watching. Thank you, everyone.